Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's October 26th. These are your headlines. Hearing about a lot of striped bass blitzes along the south shores of New England. Also heard about the first titanic tog of the fall season. And there's been lots of trout stocking going on. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple of news items to share with you, and the first one comes to us from the Fisherman's Own, Jenny Ackerman. She's going to give us sort of a profile of everyone's favorite October fish, the blackfish. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite fish species. We're going to be talking about the blackfish, or tau tog, whatever you like to call it. So. The blackfish is a member of the wrasse family. So they have those big lips, the teeth, they're bottom dwellers. The coloration on them, they range from black to brown to that rust color, some grays. When they're first born, they are green. And then the females and the smaller males have a black chin, whereas those bigger males have that classic white chin. They're known not to be the prettiest fish, but I think they're adorable. They have very stout bodies and a very powerful thick tail that allows them to swim back down into wrecks and break your jig off. They have those distinctive conical teeth in the front of their mouths and then further back they have more of a flat set of teeth that they use for gnawing on their diet of crabs, mussels, barnacles, other shellfish, stuff that they feed on. They need those stronger teeth to crack down on that hard outer shell and get into the meat. So both the males and females mature at about three to four years old. And when a female is mature and in spawn season, they spawn from April through July. The average female, let's say like about a 12 inch female can lay 30,000 eggs per season. But if you imagine a, like a five pound, 20 inch female, she can lay almost six times more than what that 12 incher can lay per season. So those are some little biological tidbits on my favorite fish, the blackfish. I'm gonna post up the current regulations for the species for all the regions here covered by the Fishman Magazine. We're gonna head out and we're gonna jig up some blackfish for ourselves to feature as a cameo on this week's open boat. All right, so we're literally out here in the field. Just caught a oh, little slippery one on the jig, and we're going to quickly release it. With black fishing, like in here, these ones are like pets, and you want to quickly release them after you catch them because all those double digit blackfish start out small. You got to appreciate the little ones like that buddy right there, and make sure you always follow the fishing regulations when you're black fishing, especially on a small rack piece. Keep your limit, respect it, put fish back if they're too small, revive the big ones, and just follow the rules. Next up, we're gonna do a quick rundown of what's going on in the Dreamboat Challenge this week. After a few weeks of inactivity, the Dreamboat Challenge is starting to heat up ahead of the final month of the competition. Luke Citarelli, inactive on the board since the summer, came in hot with a 9.75 pound blackfish that now leads the category. Kyle Krause pulled the hero moves out, entering two top tier fish. The first was a category leading sea bass weighing in at 4.9 pounds. The second was a 8.2 pound blackfish that landed him in second for the category. We also saw a 8.13 pound tog weighed in by Vincent Ferrara taking third in the category. The top three saw some big moves. Third place is now held by Luke Citarelli with 23 points, 
nipping at the heels of our second place angler Bobby Cipperelli with 24 points. And our new leader is Kyle Krause, holding positions in a whopping six categories, combining for a commanding score of 34 points. Top three mainstay Eddie Terrabile has been knocked out of the competition for now. We'll see if he can answer the call next week. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Steiger Craft Center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. And lastly, we're going to wrap up this session of the giveaway. Um, got my favorite photo of the session right here, and uh, it's kind of an interesting one. This one comes to us from a guy who calls himself Whitey South Shore. Uh, he's sent in many photos over the last year or so. Um, a lot of nice fish that he's taken on needlefish. He's a needlefish fan like I am. And I thought this shot just sort of exemplifies the term combat fishing. You can see there's multiple lines coming in out of, the, uh, out of the photo here. You can see there's two different plugs in the shot. And um, you know, surf fishing has never been more popular as far as I'm concerned. And uh, so a lot of popular spots are now filling up with lots of people. And these scenarios are happening more and more. You know, a fish grabs your plug and then swims through three other people's lines and it just turns into, you know, a mess, a cat's cradle out there. Uh, so I thought this was a really poignant shot. And uh, that's why he's going to win the prize for me. This is going to take home the Yozuri prize pack. Uh, I'll be contacting Whitey uh, today. Uh, but I wasn't going to start another one because I'm running low on giveaway stuff, but you know what? I got enough. So let's start another one right now. Um, I don't even know exactly what I'm going to give away yet, but I just looked at the calendar. So let's wrap this one up on January 31st. So we're going to go fall into winter with this one and everything else is going to stay the same. Um, you know, it's got to be a recently caught fish. It's got to be you holding your fish. And outside of that, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. It could be freshwater, salt water, surf, boat, inshore kayak, whatever, uh, could be something you caught on vacation. Uh, but you can email them to me at deanderson at thefisherman.com. Just make sure to put giveaway or contest or something in the subject line so I know what the uh, email is about. Or you can text them to the number on the screen and once again just, you know, give me some details and tell me it's for the contest. In either case, please tell me who caught the fish. Tell me a little bit. You, know, you don't have to tell me exactly where, but you just tell me you know, what town you were in or something like that, and maybe a little story behind the catch. And, uh, you know, at the end of January, we'll pick a new winner. Now, on that stretch from, like, Cape Ann down through Boston, didn't get a lot of reports this week. I don't know if guys are giving up or if they weren't fishing or if they just didn't have much to report. Um, so not a lot to talk about there. I know there are still striped bass in the area, and I've heard that there's still a few bluefish in the area. So... If there's bluefish around, that tells me that there's still a little bit of time left. So if you guys have been kind of feeling sorry for yourselves, get out there and, you know, catch some fish, make a report, send me some photos, send me a report. I'd love to hear it. Um, I am still hearing plenty of action in the Plymouth situate area. Um, again, we're not seeing like that crazy blitz that we saw the last two years, but there's lots of fish moving through, lots of bait in the area. There's still some pretty good sized bluefish around there as well. So um, you know, plenty, plenty of surf fishing to do, plenty of boat fishing to do in that area. Just got to get out there and make it happen. Crossing over the canal onto the Cape, seems like a lot of guys are switching their focus to freshwater. We saw a massive amount of trout stocking over the last two weeks. I've been seeing a lot of good largemouth photos coming out of the Cape, even some smallmouth bass photos. Um, so I'm just not hearing this or not seeing the same amount of effort from the striper guys. Um, I did hear about a few fish still coming out of the inlets on the bay side. I heard nothing from the outer beaches. And then the ponds along the uh, you know, Nantucket shoreline, Nantucket Sound shoreline, uh, still have plenty of stripers inside of them. Some of those even hold some stripers over through the winter. So uh, plenty of action still to be had down there. It seems like more guys that were focusing on albies, which uh, you know, they're, they're still around in good numbers, especially in Nantucket Sound and Vineyard Sound. So, um, you know, I guess it's sort of a case of just having to decide what, what you want to do. And when there's still albies around, you know they're going to be gone uh, sooner than later. I guess that's a better thing to focus on. Uh, up along the Elizabeth, still lots of tog being caught in that area. And you can push through the islands all the way up through Buzzards Bay and all the way up to Marion. And you're going to be finding lots of tog on all the rocky structure there. Um, getting up toward the canal. 
still bass in the canal. It seems like it's slowed down considerably since the weekend. Uh, we were seeing some pretty good fish up to the weekend, fish up into the mid 40 inch class. Now it seems like it's tapering off. Um, but if you ask me, it's just a lull between bodies of fish. We're still going to have at least one more movement of fish. And as we come in on this full moon, which has some pretty powerful daytime tides, uh, I do think you're going to see uh, another curtain call at the canal. So keep your eye on that. Uh, we don't have anything from Eddie this week. I think he's still got jury duty, so, uh, you know, we'll have to wait another week, hopefully, and we'll get back to him on that. Uh, going out through Buzzards Bay, uh, the tog fishing in Buzzards Bay has been exemplary. It's been off the charts good. Um, I'm actually going to be heading out with Jason Colby this week, and uh, I will have a report firsthand uh, on that next in next week's video. But um, still good striped bass out in the uh, out in the western part of the state there. I saw some blitzes out in that area online, uh, some videos. Doesn't look like a lot of really big fish, but um, looks like good numbers of fish. So that's that's a good thing. And there's still albies uh, in that region as well. And that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Crossing over the border into Rhode Island, uh, we'll start things off with an East Bay report from TJ Kopecky. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys, nice to be back. Got a quick video. Uh, from the East Bay, a little bit of Mount Hope Bay, Taunton River. Um, hey, things are still good. It's kind of status quo in a way. Uh, still stayed the same as last week. Um, there's still lots of bass and some small bluefish up inside of Mount Hope Bay into the upper reaches of the Lees River, the Coles River, uh, into the Taunton River. Uh, there's been a lot of birds working off the Brayton Point power plant, off the Somerset power plant, which is up inside of the Taunton River. Uh, and in between the bridges, um, where there's some uh, swift current, and uh, it's a good ambush point for those bass to work on that uh, bait. Uh, all along the Fall River shore, from Borden Lighthouse up to Tivin into the mouth of the Sakonet, there's been birds inside the Maho Bay. Uh, I always preach about Spar Island. I do really well around Spar Island. Uh, it's been hot. There's been a lot of bass, but they're small now. Uh, those 20 to 25 inch bass, which were bigger, are now from like 17 to like 25 inch bass. A lot of smaller ones in the mix, and I kind of figured that would happen once that water cooled off a little bit. Um, and I sense there is a little bit of uh, some smaller bait out there. We did have some big, uh, big pogies, and I, I can't find those pogies anymore. Um, so getting up into more of the Narragansett Bay part of East Bay, uh, I fished in the Barrington River, and I did really well on um, a five inch white mullet. Uh, it seems to be up in those rivers that there's a lot of mullet still and they haven't moved out. They're just kind of trapped up in there. I don't know how good the salinity is of the water or if it's perfect temperature for them. Um, I'm assuming that that water is a, lo a lot warmer than it would be out inside the bay. Um, but uh, I'm doing really well in the Barrington River all along Matheson Street on the bridges in the Warren River, on the Warren Bridge. Uh, so, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, I used to fish on the Bike Path Bridge in Warren and Barrington. I, if you've driven by lately and you're from the East Bay, both those bridges are down. They will be building new bridges which are wider, so actually we can fish off that, which is a plus for us. So, um, just be on the lookout for it. It's not going to be done until next year, but uh, I, I know it's a great fishing spot for a lot of people. The bridge used to be packed every weekend with, with guys just drifting clam bellies uh, up and down the rivers. Um, that's going to come back. So uh, I'm not sure if you knew that, but uh, there's a big project to get those two bridges done. So uh, we will have some good fishing again back on those bridges because um, we're kind of limited now to only fishing the outgoing tide from the, the car bridge, uh, which is okay, but it's hard to land a big fish. And there are some big fish in there. Uh, I landed two 36 inch bass in the Barrington River and I got a lot of bass in the Warren River from 24 to about 29 inches. Uh, and I got them all in that white mullet and then I switched over to top water. So um, this fish around, you just got to get out there and get them. The tog fishing behind the American Tourista is on fire. It's uh, right along the wall. You got to fish it an hour to maybe an hour and a half before the incoming tide through slack on the first hour of the outgoing tide. It's not good after that. I've, I've years of practice over there. I found that uh, just right before high tide uh, and then a little bit of the outgoing and then it, the bite just shuts off. It gets too shallow along the walls there. 
So if you can't fish there, there's a couple of spots further down next to Blount, uh, Blount Seafood on Water Street in Warren, which you, uh, you have some access to because there there's a lot of public access uh, to get to some of these spots. And if anybody questions you, you, you have the right to the water there uh, because they deem that access to a lot of people to the public. Uh, if you do get there, um, there's a lot of spots down there. You got 15 to 20 feet of water and you have the outflow from Blount, uh, which you can actually cast into from one of my spots, which is a public spot, um, which, which fared really well. Um, it, all it does is during the day when they're washing out um, at the Quahog Place at Blount Seafood, uh, all that stuff's going there and the fish are feeding on it. It's a really good spot to fish in the Warren River. Um, other than that, I haven't heard anything about Albies uh, back in the bay, um, which I, I'm not sure if they're going to come back in here. Um, we do have some good temperatures still, and with this warm weather we're having, it's going to heat up the water a little bit too. Um, so uh, the weekend looks good. I'm sure we're going to get some good reports uh, over the weekend and uh, into next week about some good togging and uh, some good striper, blue fish, and uh, hopefully uh, some more Albies. Uh, so uh, we'll catch you next week, Tight Lines. On the eastern half of the state, as far as what I'm hearing from guys or what I'm seeing myself, uh, still are some Albies around, although we just keep getting these crazy wind events, which is mixing things up and making them, you know, it's making it more and more likely that eventually uh, one of these windstorms is just going to be the end of it. So, uh, you know, keep your eyes open for Albies and, you know, definitely if, if you've, got the, if you've got the fever, uh, you want to catch as many as you can now because any one, any one of these storms could be the end of it. So, uh, you know, keep your finger on, keep your finger on the trigger for now. Striped bass wise, seeing mixed sizes uh, across the eastern part of the state. There's a lot of small fish, a lot of fish in the like, I don't know, 20 to 28 inch size, even more like 20 to 26 inch size. Lot, lots and lots and lots of those fish. Um, they're eating everything. You guys are getting them on little spooks during the daytime, like a little top knock or something like that. And at night, they seem to be really liking metal lips. Uh, that's what I've been doing the best on. Just real, you know, small surface metal lips have been getting it done. Um, some bigger fish, too, are in the mix, though. Some fish up into the 30-pound class. You're going to get those fishing, you know, more typical big bass stuff, like a live reel or an eel skin plug or something like that. So um, that's what's going on as far as what I have seen. Now, as far as togging goes, it's been amazing. Uh, every week, I think it can't get better, and then it does. And uh, this week may have may be the crescendo, we'll see. But uh, we have word here of a tog caught this week that was 19 pounds and change uh, in Rhode Island waters. I do not have the specifics on exactly where it was caught, but that doesn't really matter because that fish is already caught. Uh, but. The, what it does illustrate is that we're just seeing a, you know, a continuation of this buildup of big tog in Rhode Island waters, and uh, it's not stopping. So um, you know, now is a really time, really good time to get out there and chase down that biggest tog of the year. Uh, the fish are still relatively shallow. I think more of these big fish are in a little bit deeper water, so think more like 25 to 55 feet of water, something like that. Um, but you know, those are. That, those depths are still accessible with a heavy jig, so you can do it with a spinning rod, or you can go more conventional and throw a rig, but um, lots and lots of nice tog being caught right now, and uh, no end in sight on that. Moving over to the Point Judith area, still seeing some albies in that area, still lots of tog there, and you know, it's a, that's a good spot, that, especially Point Judith itself, you've got that big corner, it's a good spot for migrating fish, so you know, whether it's migrating bait fish, or albies or striped bass, um, that area is always a good spot to look um, at this time of the year because you're trying to catch schools as they migrate by and um, you get a good chance of you know, tying into something really nice in that area. For a little bit more on that and some things happening out more toward Block Island, let's toss it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. Um, the highlight of this week was we had a quite good cod fishing trip. So while everyone was black fishing, we snuck offshore and had a good cod trip mixed with um, jumbo sea bass fishing in, you know, 110 to 120 feet. So keep that in mind. It's funny when, when effort shifts into a fishery, like right now everyone's thinking blackfish. So 
So everyone's black fishing, which leaves a lot of the codfish spots wide open. And um, give that a shot if, you, if you've had your fill with Big Tog. Take care, see you next week. Now a lot of that blitz action has been happening along the South Shore beaches from like Charlestown all the way out to Watch Hill and Napa Tree. Uh, there are all sizes of striped bass and some bluefish being represented in these blitzes. Also some albies and bonitos showing in there at times. Uh, most of these fish are feeding on bay anchovies, but there are still mullet around. There's plenty of peanut bunker around, so uh, you've got a mixture of bait, which also translates to a mixture of sizes, so you never know what size fish you're going to find in these places, is what I'm trying to say. But guys driving the beaches, guys, you know, just spot hopping, you know, too, just going on with binoculars and checking out what's going on, are finding many different movements of fish, and uh, they're doing very well on bucktails, on Paddle tails like a little five-inch no-life bait needed. Uh, things like a Yuzuri top knock or a um, or a jumping minnow um, or something like a like an X walk from um, from Game On. All of those types of things are doing very well right now in the daytime. Guys fishing at night are you know on the average finding a few more bigger fish. They're doing it mostly at the breachways, but also on the rocky points. And at this point, you can probably guess what they're using. They're using darters and bottle darters and swimming plugs around the breachways and also drifting eels. And then in the rock piles, they're throwing bottle plugs when it's rough. They're throwing needlefish when it's not so rough. And of course, they're getting fish on live eels as well. For a little bit more on that and some of the other fisheries in the western part of the state, let's toss it over now to Declan O'Donnell from Breachway Bait and Tackle. What's going on, guys? Declan here from Breachway Bait and Tackle. Uh, here with another fishing report from Southern Rhode Island. The fishing down here, especially on Charlestown Beach, was really, really good. Uh, yesterday was Tuesday. Uh, there was fish nonstop on the beach uh, from Green Hill all the way to the breachway in the pocket. Uh, a lot of blitzing going on. Striper are mainly feeding on these bay anchovies. They're pinkish brown in color and anywhere from about a half inch to about three and a half inches. Uh, stripers anywhere from schoolie up to 35, 40 inch fish were being caught. Uh, the outgoing tide at night has still been producing very well. Uh, big mullet keep leaving the pond. Uh, that causes some big fish to hang out front. Guys still doing well on swimming plugs, as well as bucktails and swim shads in, in the middle of the breachway. The back of the pond is, has been really, really solid as well. Fish chasing peanut bunker and mullet back there. Um, the seas have been okay today, not so much, but guys got the chance to get out a couple days ago. Did really, really well on the tog. Fish up to seven, eight pounds. Uh, they're on the on the chew pretty good. Fishing from anywhere from 15 to 35, 40 feet of water. Uh, guys doing really well. Uh, the albies have been pretty slow. Not too many of them around. You would think with some of these bay anchovies in the water, they would they would come around and really put the feet on, but haven't really seen too many around uh, as of as of recently. Uh, the, there has been some guys getting some cod. Uh, bite's been all right, nothing nothing too crazy. Uh, and there is some weak fish along the south shore, whether you're jigging, uh, putting crab down, or casting. Uh, you never know when, when you could add one of those to your bags for the day. Uh, thanks again for including me in this week's Fisher Report. Hey guys, we got a little late breaking news here. As that was finishing up, you know, finalizing this video, I got news from A.W. Marina of an absolute beast. 25.78 pound tog caught in Connecticut waters by Aiden Cole. Um, brought it into the shop to weigh it in. And then as you'll see here in this release video, they brought it down to the nearest marina and uh, let it swim off. So, I mean, that is... I mean, what a fish. I don't even, even know what to say about that. That's just an absolute monster, and I didn't want to leave that out of the video. So there it is, the biggest tug of the season right there, 25.78. I doubt anyone will break that, but we shall see. One of the biggest shore tug that I have heard of in a long time uh, was taken this week. It was reported by A.W. Marina. Uh, the fish, I believe the exact weight was 13.26, but don't quote me on the uh, on the decimal points there but that's it was a 13 it was a shore caught tug that was over 13 pounds uh, that's an absolute monster from a boat even but from shore that is a that's a catch of a lifetime so congrats to the angler on that 
Uh, we also had reports of big striped bass inside the Thames River up to 48 inches uh, also taken from shore. There's a lot of those bigger fish taken on chunks and on top water floods. So um, lots and lots of activity around that area and if you, you know, if you extrapolate that out a little bit you know that there's good striped bass action on all those little ledges outside the uh, outside the Thames and then working out toward the uh, Connecticut River as well. And if there's a 13 pound tog inshore, there's even more and bigger fish on the rocks and ledges and deeper water around there. So you know that the Eastern Sound is a good place to concentrate whether you're looking for tog or striped bass. And as a bonus, there's been a lot of albies around there as well. So good, good, really good fishing in the Eastern Sound. Moving up more toward the Connecticut River, uh, striped bass fishing has been good. It hasn't been as good as some years, but there, you know, these. There's more bait in the area now. There's still not a lot of adult bunker, which has sort of made it tougher to find those big striped bass that a lot of people have grown accustomed to finding around the Connecticut River at this time. But, you know, the guys that know what they're doing are getting done. And for a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to Captain Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. Hey, what's up, guys? For this week's Fisher Report, all the wind and rain that we've been having pretty much every weekend has definitely shaken things up. But... You could get out there and find the stripers are on the move now. A lot of the peanut bunker are moving out and the stripers and still some blues around feeding on them heavily. There's still some big blues in some of the deeper reefs and rips as well. Um, the black sea bass fishing and black fishing, specifically the black fish, is improving now that the temperatures are cooling. Uh, that's uh, pretty common this time of year as you get towards the end of October and into November. It makes for some really great tog fishing and also some good topwater striper fishing. So get out there and enjoy this. Uh, looks like what we're gonna have pretty good weather coming up. Now moving up the river, we will check in quickly with Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody, uh, so it looks like we're kind of in a nice pattern shift we got a rainless weekend coming for a change uh, and the weather's absolutely gorgeous right now we get a substantial warm-up this time of year it almost always means very good fishing uh, can make the black bass fishing really spectacular uh, in the Connecticut River you expect your fish to move shallower than they've been recently uh, they'll pull onto mud flats it'll kind of catch some extra heat uh, from these sunny warm days you know temperatures in the high 70s that's gonna bring up temperatures in shallow spots really quickly the deeper water is not going to change that much, uh, but that will significantly impact the behavior of the fish. It will make them a lot more aggressive. Uh, so there's going to be a little window where there's probably be going to be some fantastic bass fishing uh, this weekend. Panfish will also increase their activity. In the lower river right now, you can expect some much better white perch fishing. Uh, Captain Noah Johnson's been out poking around in some uh, tidal estuaries towards the bottom of the river of late, and he's been catching a lot of big uh, white perch. I've been out looking for schoolies and hickory shad. They're fairly active. It's definitely not as good a season for bass uh, in the lower Connecticut. It's been uh, kind of lackluster bait turnout, but there's still plenty of uh, smaller fish around and some uh, uh, just around and over slot. Uh, without adult bunker though, we're kind of lacking those, those large fish, or at least in numbers and uh, really active blitzes. But Get out and enjoy this good warm weather. It's probably the last little spurt of that we're going to get. I'm sure there will be some uh, Indian summer type weather in November as well. Uh, but there's definitely going to be a pattern shift after this really warm stuff. So it's definitely worth getting out, fishing, and enjoying it while you can. And now we'll take a right out of the river, head a little further west out to Westbrook, and we'll check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. Uh, here in the central and eastern sound, we still have a lot of albies around, which is pretty cool this late in October. Um, there's been a whole bunch around. They've really alternated between being uh, voracious eaters and very, very picky for long stretches. But if you can catch them in the right window, um, they are eating still. Uh, I was able to land a couple yesterday um, within a bunch of casts. So they're still around um, more further east uh, and fewer further west. Uh, what's working right now, uh, one ounce pink, one ounce electric chicken, albie snacks, and amber and white. Um, those seem to be doing well um, 
they've been on a bunch of different bait, peanut bunker, uh, bay anchovies, that kind of thing. Tog bite has been great. Uh, a lot of short fish, but there's some really big fish starting to make the rounds on social media. Um, tells us there's definitely more of a big fish bite incoming. Um, I was able to get a seven pounder yesterday. Uh, we were able to go through a bunch of shorts, uh, definitely a few keepers in the mix. Um, I would say start at 15 feet, work your way deeper. Um, current is a, a little bit better. It's gonna organize those fish a little bit better um, than just kind of a slack tide, slack water. Uh, use the lightest jig you can get away with or the lightest rig lead that you can get away with as well. Um, still a lot of stripers and blues around. Um, they've been under birds, blitzing. There's been a few bigger fish poking around, but those are gonna get a little harder to get as the water cools and these nights kind of get much colder. Um, but overall, it's been really good. This warm stretch that we're looking ahead towards is going to keep things very interesting. So uh, hopefully this time next week, we're talking about a whole bunch more good fishing. Still Albies in that region um, as well, and then moving all the way out west. You know, there are sporadic pods of Albies going all the way out to the western sound. Uh, that sort of central western part of the sound has been very good for striped bass. Also very good togging in the area. There's still porgies around to be cut, but they are starting to thin out a little bit. And, um, you know, guys going out a little deeper, you know, and heading out more toward Montauk too, are finding some pretty good sea bass fishing as well. So lots of good bottom species to fishing going on right now. And there's plenty of stripers around. There's still lots of bluefish around too. So, I mean, really eastern and central sound uh, are putting out good numbers of various species of fish right now. It's just very robust fishery in those areas. And now as we head out west, we'll check in with Max Finch from Fisherman's World. The striped bass and blue fishing has been absolutely nuts in our harbors, back bays, up the Norwalk River, all the way to Wall Street, the Saugatuck mouth, and then all the way up the Saugatuck. Fish can be found along our beaches and our deep water reefs. A lot of the fish in the harbors and estuaries are all keyed in on peanut bunkers. So small paddle tails, spooks, bucktails are really good because, you know, there's some monster bluefish around. We've seen them past 15 pounds this past week. They've been, you know, chomping on the peanut bunker and that, you know, early morning and sunset is a given, but there's been sporadic blitzes throughout the day. So, you know, from, I would say, Saugatuck to Nauk has a big concentration of bluefish and bass, and there's tons of bait. And once the temps get low enough where the peanut bunker really start flooding on our beaches and out front, that's when the bite out front will blow wide open. Diamond Jig in 28C and 11B has also been good with a lot of schoolies to slot sized fish in the mix. We've seen and heard of some fish over 30 pounds. They are definitely there. You just got to really work through a lot of these smaller fish. To our east, middle ground's been fishing really well. Blackfish, sea bass, big porgies this time of year, bass blues, you name it, and some albies still around. The albi concentration in the Nauk area is not so good. There are some small pods popping up south of the islands. Most of the action though is from Fairfield all the way to the mouth of the Housatonic and then to Charles. And a lot of these albies actually moved way up in tight on all this bay anchovies that are around. So when there's smaller pods, you know, be patient, try not to run and gun, just kind of sit and wait if you see them popping up and you can place your cast well. Black fishing has also been great. The shallow water bite's still lock and load, but there's, you know, you got to pick through a lot of porgies, short black fish, black sea bass to get those keeper fish, but there are plenty of people finding limits. We've seen them to eight pounds this past week. Our deep water wrecks are definitely really good if you can get on them in like 60 to 80 feet. I've seen guys showing me pictures of doubleheader knothead sea bass and doubleheader blackfish. And to wrap things up, let's take a short flight down to Costa Rica and hear what's going on at Marina Pez Vela. Hey there guys, this is Ben Gilmore from down here in Costa Rica and the Marina Pez Vela. We are super excited right now. We're just three weeks away from our first tournament of the new season, the Dorado Derby. We cannot wait for that one, guys. Right on cue, the Dorados have arrived and we've just got some insane fishing going on right now. Only yesterday, aboard my boat, Good Day, we caught 22 Dorados, an absolutely insane day. Just a few days back, we caught a sailfish, 12 yellowfin tuna, and 30 Dorados. Yes, you heard me right, guys. Three zero Dorados in a day. There's been a few blue marlin out there. Um, we hooked a striped marlin the other day. And inshore, there's been a few jacks, mackerel, and rooster fish as well. Guys, get yourselves down here. We've got plenty of boats available, plenty of availability the next few months, and we'd love to see you here in Costa Rica. That's what I have for you guys in the courts this week. Hopefully you're gonna find them inspiring. I know it's been windy like it is today, and uh, I know the seas have been churned up, especially on the weekends, but uh, you know, the, the season's getting shorter. 
So, you know, get out there when you can, make it happen. And if, you're, you know, if you can't, get out there in the surf or go catch some of these stock trout. Uh, there's a lot of things going on right now. Um, and, I mean, I know I only talked about the trout stocking in Massachusetts, out on the Cape, but trout have been stocked in Rhode Island, trout have been stocked in Connecticut. We've had some salmon stocking in Connecticut as well, so there's, there's a lot of different options for anglers right now. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. It'll give you a full taste of what we offer. We cover everything from Delaware all the way up to Maine. We cover all angling disciplines. We cover you know, spot-specific stuff. We cover tactical stuff. We do some travel pieces. It's all there. It's 30 bucks for the year. You're going to get 12 paper issues sent to your house. You're going to get 26 digital issues sent to your email box during the fishing season. That's April to November. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. If you're still not interested after you go to the website, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching. 